So right now I got the bell housing on and I got it torqued down. I got all the bolts in and I'm about to check the run out. The run out of the flywheel to the bell housing to make sure that the hole in the bell housing that the transmission will line up to is perfectly concentric to the flywheel. So in other words, the center of the flywheel matches perfectly with the center of the opening of the bell housing. So I'm going to check concentricity and the total run out of the bell housing. And I already checked it and everything seems to be within spec. So I started with zero at the very top and I made marks at the very top, bottom, left and right, and also in between. So the first thing I did was I set the top mark to zero. So I made that zero and then I zeroed out the dial indicator so that I would start at zero at the very top. And then I turned the motor over by hand with a breaker bar on the crank pulley until I got to the first mark here and then I recorded that number. And I turned it over again until I got to this mark and recorded that number. I did the same over here and then I came back over here to make sure it landed back on zero to make sure nothing moved. And it was within about a thousand, so things might have uh, settled in when it went around the first time. So I dialed this back down to zero, set that back to zero, and then checked all these numbers again. And they were within half of one thousandth. So they were super close within what I would say would be a good spec. So I checked these numbers a few times just to confirm that they're pretty close to what I have written down with Sharpie. And then about the third time I went around, I recorded the numbers in between just to make sure that from here to here is not out of spec. So this diagonal here, making sure those numbers aren't too far apart out of spec. And the spec is actually 10 thousandths total indicated reading, which means if this is zero and this is greater than 0 0.010, then that would be out of spec. So that's the total indicated reading is the difference between this number and this number, so the diagonal. And the same would be true with this and this. So the diagonal, the straight across would be the total indicated reading. And for Tremec, which is what transmission I'm gonna be using, and I'm also using a brand new aluminum bell housing, stock style T5, brand new casting. You wanna make sure the spec is within five thousandths run out and the run out is actually the difference between here and the very center. And the center would be having these two numbers. So the difference between here is four thousandths. So the run out would actually be two thousandths. And I actually have five thousandths. And if I'm under five thousandths, I'm within spec. So right here is 0 0.001, right here is 0 0.006. The difference between those is 0 0.005. So it's 5 thousandths total indicated reading. Half of that is 2.5 thousandths. So well within spec. So the way I have it set up, all my numbers are pretty well within spec. The furthest difference between any numbers is those two and it's still you know well within spec that would be uh, 25 thousandths gets a little confusing in the dial indicator but 
So as long as it's within 5,000 run out, which would be 10,000 total indicated reading. And once again, total indicated reading is the difference between these two. So as long as this and this is under 10, we're good. Same with every other number. Nothing is wildly out of range, so we're pretty good. Now, this is how I have the dial indicator set up. You can get a good look right here. It's just a magnetic base on the flywheel, so it's nice and solid. And I got this nice fluid filled dial indicator I'm borrowing. So I just set up that way. Can't hit anything. I rotated over once, made sure nothing hit. First time it did, so I had to move a few things around and eventually I got it set up to where I can turn it over and it won't hit anything and skew my numbers. So that's how I have that set up. And I made sure to torque down the bell housing. I got all the bolts in. There's six of them. I torqued those to a spec just so the bell housing is sitting flush against the flat uh, the just so the bell housing is sitting flush against the block. Also the block plate is installed just to make sure the numbers will be as close as possible when everything's bolted up and the transmission's in. And if these numbers were out of spec, the way I'd correct that would, would be to use uh, offset dowels. So right over here, these dowels. Those are the stock dowels in my 302 block, right there in the middle there. There's one on each side. So you would have to use offset dowels to move the bell housing in whichever direction, which if you need to move your bell housing, there's plenty of videos to look up on how to figure that out, which direction to go, what dowels to use. But anyways, if I had to move it, I'd use offset dowels and it'd be able to move the bell housing either up, down, left, right, whichever direction it would need to go to make the bell housing concentric with the flywheel. But my numbers are all within spec, so I'm gonna call it good. So this is how I have it set up. I can see if I can turn the motor over and show you how I got my readings. I'll go around it once. So I'll try to land right there so you can see. Let me get this set up though. With the front of the motor, I'm gonna use this breaker bar. Just to turn the crank pulley bolt. Turn the motor over, which will turn the indicator. I've done this so many times to where I hardly have to look where to stop. Well, that's pretty close. So my mark is right there. And that little plunger there is the needle that takes the reading. And see if we can get a good shot at that. There's the reading right there. Hopefully it's within focus. And then record that number right there. And then basically do the same with every mark, making sure it's within spec and just record the number. At least double check it, maybe triple check it. I think I've checked like five times now, making sure nothing 
has moved around and all my numbers are accurate. So I'm gonna go back up here to zero, make sure it lands on zero. Just make sure nothing moved. So I made it back here up on zero. See that reading is pretty close. And the reading on the dial indicator is landed back on zero. So if you can turn the motor over multiple times and keep getting the same numbers for each mark, safe to say nothing's moving and those numbers are pretty accurate. So that's about the gist of how to check run out of your bell housing to the flywheel. And that'll just ensure that you don't wear anything out prematurely I'm running a pilot bearing, you see right there. And if everything's not concentric, those can wear out pretty fast. And when those wear out, that's no bueno for the rest of the transmission. You can wear out a lot of other things on the transmission. You can wear the input shaft, the, I think the first gear that goes in the transmission, like the input shaft gear. Uh, you can get vibration, bad clutch engagements, just all sorts of things. So just make sure to double check all these numbers and don't want to have to worry or wear anything out before it's time. So hopefully this will give me years of good service and safe to say I think I could put everything in now I think the transmission can go in I'm about to pull the bell housing back off and install the clutch and the pressure plate and all that clean up the flywheel the flywheel's got a little bit of rusting on it So now that I have the dial indicator all set up, all that taken care of, I can uh, get ready for the transmission to go in, get the clutch installed, get the pressure plate in, and everything can go back together.